Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host, Phil from TheCage.com, and this is a Galaxy A7 2018. We all thought Galaxy A7 and A9 was dead because they seem to be replaced by the Galaxy A6 and the Galaxy A8, but they revived the lineup with triple and quadruple cameras built in. So this is the A7 with triple cameras. So inside the packaging is obviously the phone and the free Jello case. It might vary depending on the region, whether you get the case or not. So even if you don't get one, it could be normal. And there is a packet of manuals along with the SIM card tray removal tool, a pair of earphones, a charger with relatively low 5 volts 1.55A of output. And to match that is the micro USB cable. Yes, you heard it right. Samsung included the USB-C port in the Galaxy A7 2017, but in the latest variant, they included the older micro USB standard. Here's the phone itself with the protected plastic. We're gonna peel that off. And inside that is the blue color Galaxy A7 2018. Let's turn the power on. And while it does that, in front you get the six inches of full HD plus AMOLED panel, receiver, and 24 megapixels of high resolution front facing camera. That's F2.0, that's pretty bright. Along with the sensors, there's nothing on the bottom since all the buttons are built in there as a soft key on the right hand side. Surprisingly, you get the power button combined with the fingerprint reader, which is not very common. Sony briefly had it starting from the Xperia Z5, uh, next week, Robin had it, and that spiritual successor, Razer phones had it, and lately, some Meizu's and Motorola's have that as well. On top of that is the volume rocker. On the left-hand side is a SIM card tray. Uh, if you get the dual SIM model, dual SIM card tray, and the micro SD card expansion, and nothing else. On top is the noise-canceling secondary microphone. On the bottom is a aforementioned micro USB port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and just speaker along with the microphone. On the back, there is Samsung logo, LED flash, and triple cameras are located right there. On top is a five megapixels of depth sensing sensor. It cannot work by itself. Rather, it works along with the main sensor in the middle, 24 megapixels, f1.7, that's pretty bright, without OIS, to create the bokeh images, also known as the portrait mode. And on the very bottom is eight megapixels of f2.4 ultra wide angle camera. Although this is built out of glass, it doesn't support wireless charging, and that's pretty much all you get. Now the phone is turned on, let's go ahead, skip with the setup process. And we're all done, ready to use film with the Samsung Experience Launcher. This is nothing new, you can swipe up from the bottom to bring out the app drawer. Um, this is the home screen and the settings screen looks like this, nothing special, except for the fact that they included the new navigation system that can be found under the navigation bar menu. So by tapping the little dot here twice, you can hide the navigation bar. One thing you can do by swiping up is you can make it reappear or you can use it as a gesture navigation. So multitasking, home, or back each just by swiping. This is seen from the OnePlus devices. Samsung has opted in for this. I was very happy with the OnePlus's implementation. I hope this is as good as that experience. Specs-wise, it's got Exynos 7885 octa-core processor, which is somewhere between Snapdragon 625 and 636. You can choose between four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, or six gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigabytes of storage built in. You can also expand that through the microSD card slot up to 512 gigabytes. Rest of the things include Android Oreo and 3300 milliamps of battery. Multimedia-wise, it's got FM radio built in, so you can plug in your headphones to listen to FM radio without paying your data fees. And for camera, the app looks like this with either standard angle or ultra wide angle of your choice. It's also got scene optimizer, so you can automatically recognize the scenes and get the best settings for your photograph. And of course, there's a live focus, so you can add up the bokeh or portrait mode to your photos. It's also got an array of sound effects, including the equalizer, UHQ upscaler, Cuban Pro concert hall, adapt sound, and Dolby Atmos, although that only works with the Bluetooth headphones or the headphones plugged in. At 350 euros, this is actually cheaper than the predecessor, so it might sound like a good deal, but there are a few of the things that Samsung decided to take out from the predecessor, including that USB USB-C port on the bottom replaced with the micro USB port instead and Samsung Pay now only supports NFC there is no MST so you will have limited capability or no capability at all depending on the region and also this does not include any weather protection so unlike the predecessor if you dunk this into water it's very likely that you'll have to get it serviced it does at Bixby, but not full suite of it. It's got Bixby Home, Reminder, Vision, but not Bixby Voice. So when you ask if it supports Bixby, yeah, partly, but not that Bixby that works like Google Assistant or Siri. So that's the Galaxy A7 2018. Very flashy on the back, almost as flashy as my HTC U11. Uh, we'll get back with the review very soon. It doesn't have all the specs that you want, but maybe it's better in real life. 
We'll be back with the review very soon. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.